بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم heard a man saying Oh my sins, oh my sins He is afraid from too many sins that he has done The Messenger وسلم, said to him, Say, O oh my Lord, your forgiveness is larger than my sins, and your mercy is dearer and more helpful to me than my own good deeds. The man said that. Then the Messenger وسلم, said to him again, Say this supplication again. He repeated it once more. Then again the Messenger وسلم, said to him, to say this beautiful dua again. My Lord, your forgiveness is larger than my sins and your mercy is more hopeful to me than my own good deed. The man said it a third time. Then the Messenger وسلم, said to him, Go, your sins are forgiven. This is a beautiful example about the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his willingness to accept the repentance and remove all sins and forgive us for them. And the acceptance of repentance is one of the main things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَن يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah Almighty wants to accept your repentance. That is why we need to remember this often and often again. Repentance is one of the greatest ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is something that Allah Almighty loves a lot. And Allah Almighty is ready to forgive your sins no matter how big and how many they were. Listen to this beautiful ayah in the Holy Quran. This is called the most hopeful ayah in the entire Quran. The most hopeful ayah in the entire Quran. Here Allah Almighty is addressing his servant, but he is not addressing the servants who are obedient to him. The address is to the servants who have done lots and lots of bad deeds and sins. Allah Almighty says to the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say O Muhammad to them, O oh, my servant, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh, my servant, who have transgressed greatly against themselves by doing too many sins and wrongdoings, do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because verily Allah Almighty forgives all sins entirely, and verily Allah Almighty is the most merciful, the most forgiving. Now when you hear this beautiful speech from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing the disobedient servants. How do you think Allah Almighty addresses the obedient servants? One beautiful point here to highlight. Uh, some people might think that repentance is only for the wrongdoers, only for the sinners. This is far from the truth. Repentance is a beautiful ibadah that is required from every person. You should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether you have sinned or not. Obviously, if you have sinned, it is more important to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, repentance is many levels. It's not only one single level. The basic type of repentance is to repent from wrongdoings and from sins. This is the common form of repentance done by many people. Here, this is the one that Allah Almighty is asking His servant to do. Here, He is giving them hope that He is ready to forgive. He is ready to accept their repentance. He is ready to start with them a new start. Now, let us uh, speak about the link between Ramadan and between repentance. Ramadan is called the uh, month of repentance and for a good reason because the stage or the environment is set for your favor, in your favor. 
the favor of those who have sinned so that they might repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anyone who is not forgiven his sins in Ramadan, then this is a great loss. If you do not repent in Ramadan, then when do you repent? If when Ramadan is ready for you and you do not see is this opportunity of Ramadan, then when are you going to seize the opportunity? Listen to this beautiful hadith from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, from Ramadan to a Ramadan is forgiveness of sins. This is forgiveness of sins. As long as the major sins were not committed in between. But there is another one. Another level of forgiveness and repentance in Ramadan. This is clear in the hadith of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very strange hadith. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ascended the member. So after taking the first step, he says, Ameen. This is something that he didn't do before. So the people were surprised. What is this Ameen? The second step, and he again says, Ameen. The third step, and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ameen. When he was asked about this, he explained in one of them, he says, Jibreel, peace be upon him, came to me. And he says, O Muhammad, woe upon anyone who reaches Ramadan and he is not forgiven. He, his sins are not forgiven for him. His repentance didn't happen. He didn't get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may he stay away from the mercy of Allah Almighty. He's a loser, God forbid. Say, Ameen, O Muhammad. The Messiah Sallallahu said, thereupon I said, Ameen. So you have dua from Jibreel alayhi salam. And you have the dua from the Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi by saying Ameen for the acceptance of this dua for anyone who do not seize the opportunity of Ramadan. This is a great opportunity. This is a great opportunity that we should not waste. Now, usually many people delay the repentance so they say inshallah tomorrow i will repent inshallah next week i will repent when i get older i will repent when i am free from my uh, worldly activity i will repent and so on they continue to do that and usually that fails for many reasons the first one you are speaking about tomorrow what about today was the tomorrow of yesterday? You are already the next day and the next day and the next week came to you over and over and over again. So how come you didn't repent yet? This is the first one. The second one. Can you guarantee that you will live until that time to repent? The next point is, if you will live until then, can you guarantee that you will have the stamina and the will to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And moreover, even if, can you guarantee that when you will come there, inshallah, your sins are going to be the same and not much worse, God forbid, and so on. The problem with the delaying of repentance is that usually the sins become more and more. And the stamina and the willingness to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might become weaker. can give an analogy to that. And here in this analogy that the imagine the a person who needed to uh, cut down a, a tree that was bothering him uh, a harmful tree in the way that he needs to get rid of so he wanted to cut it down and then he became a bit lazy and he says tomorrow i will do it next week i will do it next month and i will do it comes next year and he actually this time he has decided to take it down but now he has found that the tree is much bigger much stronger and his stamina is much less and he is much weaker this is the example of the danger of delaying the repentance until it is too late we can highlight some of the points regarding the concept of repentance in Ramadan now, Alhamdulillah, in Ramadan, you have many opportunities of total forgiveness. You have one guaranteed dua every time during your iftar time. And iftar doesn't mean that it is the exact moment that you are breaking the fast. 
But as long as you are sitting there waiting for the iftar or taking your iftar, all of that is time for dua. So make sincere dua for the goodness in this world and in the hereafter, including, and most importantly, the repentance. The second point is that at the time of suhoor, you are waking up for suhoor. This is the last part of the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend upon his creation and upon his servant with mercy and generosity and acceptance. So make istighfar and make dua at this time and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And throughout the day when you are fasting, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guided us to four things that we need to increase a lot in the month of Ramadan. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us what these four things, two of them are for you, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These two things pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other two, these things that you cannot do without them, you are in need of them. The two that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increase saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and istighfar, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So you can say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah. Or la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah. These are the two things that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you are fasting. The two things that you cannot do without, that we are in need of, Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah, for paradise, and ask Him for protection from hellfire. For sure, dua. These are remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dua at the same time. You can combine all the four together by saying something La ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, Allahumma inni asaluka al Jannah, Allahumma inni a'udhuka min al nar. And you can repeat that when you are fasting as per the guidance from the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another important thing that many people overlook, which is the uh, prayer of repentance. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guided us to a beautiful thing to do that will guarantee your repentance, inshallah, and the acceptance of that repentance and the forgiveness of your sins. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, no person commits a sin and then he goes and make ablution, that is wudu, and then pray, and then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, except that Allah Almighty will forgive him. Allah Almighty will forgive him. This is guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we are human beings. It is natural that we err and we do mistakes and we sin and we do wrongdoings intentionally or unintentionally, knowingly or unknowingly. This is part of our nature. We should remember our father, Adam, alayhi salam, he was like that. Adam, alayhi salam, sinned, made a mistake at least. And then what did he do? He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. He repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, it is not strange or not unthinkable or this is normal to be like your father to sin however you should not stop there you should also be like your father by repenting your father made a mistake and he repented why do you make a mistake and don't repent you should at least be like him when you make a mistake when you sin you repent but the repentance is not only for sinners as we said it is a beautiful ibadah the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said by Allah Almighty I seek forgiveness from Allah Almighty and repent to him every day 70 times or more than 70 times and in other narration 100 times every day and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sin free and Allah Almighty has forgiven for him everything the past and the present and the future Yet he is teaching us this beautiful ibadah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, why do we repent? We repent so that we will have a new start with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We repent because we see the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. This is a mercy from Allah Almighty that he guided us to repentance. This is a blessing from Allah Almighty that He guided us to repentance. When you repent, 
you start again as someone who never sinned or did a mistake. Allah Almighty, one of His beautiful names is at tawwab the one who repents upon His creation often and often and often again without, without a limit. No matter how much, how often you make a mistake and you repent to Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty will accept your repentance. And every time you will have a new start. Every time you will have a new start. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us a beautiful a glad tidings. He says, the one who repents from a sin is like someone who never sinned. For a human being, when someone repents, you might forgive him. If you are forgiven, you will forgive him. However, if he will do the same mistake again and he asks for forgiveness, Maybe you will forgive him a second time, but when he does it a third time, most likely you are not going to forgive him. And if he repeated that more again and again and again, you will not accept that. But Allah Almighty is ready to accept. No matter how many times this is repeated, Allah Almighty will still accept. The second glad tidings from Allah Almighty is that Allah Almighty loves those who repent. So do not wait until you do a mistake to repent, but repent so that Allah Almighty will love you. You repent so that Allah Almighty will love you. You fear that Allah Almighty might love you less and that is why you increase repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you will get closer to Him and closer to Him. Next, after that, a very strange thing. Very, very strange thing. You see, imagine someone who made a mistake and he asked for forgiveness and you forgive him. Fine. You might be willing to also forget what he did which is great as well. But there is no way that you are going to consider his mistakes before as good deeds or favors in your behalf or for your sake. But Allah Almighty gave us a very beautiful glad tidings in the Holy Quran. After mentioning major sins that deserve punishment, that deserve hellfire, God forbid, and that deserve hellfire for eternity, Almighty gave us a glad tidings, beautiful glad tidings. He says, except those who repent. Except those who repent and they believe and they do good deeds. What happens to them? He says, for them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces their bad deeds with good deeds. He convert, converts the bad deeds into good deeds. Can you imagine the mercy and generosity from Allah Almighty? A person who was a sinner, who's done so many grave mistakes and sins and wrongdoings, coming in the hereafter, opening his book and reading so many good deeds that he never did. I will be surprised, what is that? Where did it come from? It might not be mine, maybe there is a mistake. They said, no, this is because your repentance was sincere for the sake of Allah Almighty and Allah Almighty replaced these bad deeds into good deeds. This is the generosity and mercy from Allah Almighty, at tawab Ar-Rahim, the one who accepts repentance often and often again, the one who is the most merciful, most compassionate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another glad tidings for those who repent is that they will be in the hereafter with the righteous people. Even if they didn't do much good deeds, and even if they have done so many bad deeds, if they sincerely repent for the sake of Allah Almighty, in the hereafter, they will be with the group of the believers and righteous people. And in the Holy Quran, it is mentioned that they will have their light in front of them and to their sides, to the right and to the left. Because in the hereafter, it will be total darkness. The only light you will have is the light of your good deeds, the light of your faith, the light of your righteousness. Allah Almighty mentions those who repented because they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have their light there for them, even if they haven't done so many good deeds. Dear brothers and sisters, Ramadan is a very beautiful opportunity and good opportunity because the soul is nourished through fasting. Because you are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The atmosphere is in your favor. All the devils and evils are enchained. It is very easy to repent and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seize this opportunity. Ask Allah Almighty for forgiveness. Do not fear your forgiveness. Do not fear. Do not fear the forgiveness of your sins because it's guaranteed, inshallah, if you repent. Do not fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
because you sinned as long as you are repenting. You should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are not repenting. You should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your sins if you are away from Allah Almighty. Seize this opportunity, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have a new start in your life, clean your heart and clean your soul, and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your repentance, to guide you to repentance and goodness and righteousness. We pray to Allah Almighty to guide us in this Ramadan, to be good for ourselves and for our families, neighbors and society, and then for all of humanity. We pray to Allah Almighty to guide us to His divine truth. We pray to Allah Almighty to deliver us to Ramadan, deliver Ramadan to us and accept it from us, inshallah, with righteousness and good deeds. We pray to Allah Almighty to facilitate for us the fasting of Ramadan, recitation of Ramadan and the prayers in Ramadan and the supplications in Ramadan and the repentance in Ramadan. We pray to Allah Almighty to accept that from us and we pray to Allah Almighty to make all our good deeds uh, sincere for his sake and to make the repentance, our repentance, sincere for his sake, regretting our sins, regretting our mistakes and promising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make a determination not to go back to them, make a determination to have a new start in our life far away from the bad environment and bad uh, company and people that we had around us. You need to have people around you who will benefit you in the hereafter, benefit you when you are in the grave, who will pray for you after your departure from this world. Those are the people who will benefit you after, when you are in most need of them. Those are the people who will intercede with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter for your sake, so that you will be forgiven and your repentance acceptance. We pray to Allah Almighty to purify our hearts and our souls and our actions and make them all sincere for His sake. And we pray to Allah Almighty to make us among those who repent and those who like the, those who never sinned. And we pray to Allah Almighty to gather us in the hereafter with the companionship of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophets and Messengers and the Righteous and the Martyrs and those people who are closed and loved, close to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and loved by Him. We pray to Allah Almighty to grant us His love and His mercy and His forgiveness and to make us among those who are pleased Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and whom Allah Almighty is pleased with. We pray to Allah Almighty to forgive us and forgive our parents and our families and our offspring and our neighbors and uh, all Muslims all over the world and guide all humanity to what benefit them in this world and in the hereafter. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. Thank you very much for attending and th thanks is for Islamic Affairs and Charitable Activities Department for arranging this. Hope to see you again, inshallah, in the future. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.